Park. It's a canine convention. Here to see the series finale with the Colorado Rockies on what is a landmark day for that franchise. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball is presented by the Sanderson Ford. It's the D-backs and Rockies for the final time in downtown Phoenix this season. Good afternoon from Chase Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium, Bob Brenly along the way. The series finale for the D-backs and Rockies here. We'll play once more at Colorado in a week or so. Uh, but Bob, a landmark day for the Rockies franchise. Todd Helton today announces uh, that after 17 years, this is it. Well, I think uh, Diamondbacks pitchers are glad to hear that news. Todd Helton ranks among the league leaders against the Diamondbacks in every important offensive category. His body of work throughout his 17-year Major League Baseball career has just been fantastic among the leaderboard in all-time numbers, as you see right there. Uh, just played the game the right way, uh, the ultimate definition of a grinder, spent the entire career with one organization that is so rare nowadays. Uh, I'm going to miss Todd Helton. Well, Diamondbacks fans have been watching Todd Helton since the Diamondbacks were a franchise, so it certainly is a historic day for Colorado. When we come back here, we're set for first pitch. Randall Delgado on the mound for the Diamondbacks. Jolice Chassin for the Rockies. The D-backs go for the series win in the series finale. First pitch coming up on Fox Sports Arizona. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball is presented by Sanderson Ford back at Chase Field on a Bark in the Park Sunday. The Diamondbacks have won six of their last seven against the Rockies. A win today, the D-backs will clinch their third straight season series win 
over Colorado with three more still to play at Coors Field this weekend. Diamondbacks have taken the field. Time now for our national anthem, and here is the voice of Chase Field, Mr. Chuck Draga. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and please remove your hats. Please direct your attention to the field as we honor the United States of America and pay tribute to our veterans, active duty, and retired men and women of our armed services. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies invite you to join in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner performed by the Orpheus Male Chorus of Phoenix under the direction of Dr. Brooke Carter Larson. You're proud to own, we're proud to build. The backs and Rockies, Colorado wrapping up a three city road trip here in Arizona. They opened up with three in San Diego. They got swept at Petco Park. They've won uh, one of three against the Giants in San Francisco and Todd Helton and company here at Chase Field over the weekend to finish up the trip and uh, Helton announced he is finishing up his career. This is going to be it for the Rockies longtime first baseman. Well, and as a former manager on behalf of Don Baylor, Jim Leland, Buddy Bell, Clint Hurdle, Jim Tracy, and Walt Weiss, uh, we'd all like to thank Todd Helton for his contributions, uh, not only to the Colorado Rockies organization, but to the game of baseball. He did it the right way, that's for sure. Announcing uh, today he will retire after 17 seasons all in the purple of the Rockies. Randall Delgado's out on the mound for the Diamondbacks, set to face Charlie Blackman, and we are... Just about underway here in the series finale. The last time we'll see the Rockies here at Chase Field in 2013. The D-backs will play three more against Colorado at Coors Field next weekend. Delgado and Blackman series finale. D-backs and Rockies ball one. 
Randall Delgado, your Arizona four Diamondback starting pitcher. His 17th start this year. The 23-year-old right-hander from Panama. 100 innings pitched, 101 hits allowed. And what has hurt Randall above all things this year, 20 of those 101 hits he's given up have been home runs, including four in his previous start at Dodger Stadium last Monday. And Bob, if you could somehow take away those home runs, Randall would be having an outstanding season. That has been consistently uh, the bug that has come up and bitten him all year long. Yeah, that's a big if. Yeah, four home runs allowed in two and two-thirds innings of work at Dodger Stadium where the ball doesn't carry well at night, and it really is all about location. When he's down, he's good. When he's up, he gets hit hard. Martin Prado's in left field for the Diamondbacks. One away. This is the lineup that Walt Weiss has put out today. Helton is not playing in his final game at Chase Field. And some new faces in this series here today. Uh, Charlie Blackman leading off playing center. Josh Rutledge first look at him in this series at second base. Corey Dickerson in right. Troy Tulowitzki at short. Ryan Wheeler in left field. Jordan Pacheco getting the start for Todd Helton at first base. Jorvik Torrealba behind the plate. Jonathan Herrera at third base. And the pitcher is right-hander Jolice Chassin. Don Helton just turned 40 August 20th. An RBI double and a run scored last night is only hit of the series so far. Josh Rutledge steps in. He's at second base today. 229 on the year and seven homers in what's been a disappointing season for Rutledge. He beat out D.J. LeMayhew for the second base job this spring, but while LeMayhew was tearing up AAA in Colorado Springs, Rutledge struggled. He was hitting about 240 in the big leagues and sent down to the minor leagues near the end of May. Well, this whole Todd Helton retirement thing, it's just so funny the way it kind of came about. Down the line in right, Rutledge knocks it into the corner. That's a fair ball. He takes off for a second. Arado Parra has it, and Rutledge stops with his sixth double. And note the location. Pitches from the middle of the thighs up are the ones that tend to get hit hard. This one a slicing line drive down into that right field corner. Rattles off that bullpen fence by the time Parra can get there. Rutledge is safe at second base. Just yeah. quickly finish on Helton. A lot of people were saying, well, why would you announce it in Arizona before a day game on an NFL Sunday? Because that's exactly the way he wanted it to be. He, he didn't even want to have a day at Coors Field. He had to be talked into that uh, by a lot of his teammates and some of his close personal friends who said he would be being selfish if he didn't give the Rocky fans an opportunity to come out to Coors Field one last time and pay their respects to Todd Helton. It's just the kind of guy he is. He didn't want the attention. He didn't want a farewell tour around the National League. Just if he had his brothers the last day of the season, he'd just pack his duffel bag, throw it in the back of the pickup truck, and you'd never see him again. Corey Dickerson steps in for the Rockies. Quite a contrast, certainly, to Chipper Jones, who... Seem to really enjoy his uh, farewell tour, if you want to use that term. But it, almost more importantly, Bob, the fans, and not just in Atlanta, everywhere seem to enjoy that. And the fans do want to have their opportunity to say thank you and good luck. Uh, it seems like that's important. Uh, it just all depends on the player's personality, you know. It... Fisted into shallow center. Owings is under for the second out. Brad caught up with Todd yesterday. It's probably the, the ultimate compliment, you know, when, when uh, you know, the guys you play with and against say something like that. But, um, you know, I, I respect my opponents, respect the game, and um, just uh, go out and, and, and live, live by that every day. Here's Troy Tulowitzki now. When you've, and it's a remarkable thing in this day and age in sports to play 17 seasons with one franchise. And that makes, it seems, the opportunity to say thank you and farewell even more important.
course, he was asked if he was interested in staying in the game in some capacity, and he said, you know, maybe after a couple of years. He said, but retirement means you get away from the game. So <laughs> he's going to enjoy some time at home with his girls, and uh, he's a big-time outdoorsman, loves to hunt and fish and play golf. So uh, I think he's just going to enjoy his retirement for a couple of years and uh, see where the future takes him. Delgado trying to strand to Rutledge at second after his one-out double. But he's behind 2-1 and one on Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki, four hits in the series so far, all singles. That's a balk. Tony Randazzo, the plate umpire, sends Rutledge to third. Him up right center field. Adam Eaton drifting near Corrado Parra has it, and they strand Rutledge despite the double in the block. No score, just underway. Chase Field. Josh Rutledge had a one-out double, was balked to third, but stranded there. Here's the lineup for Kirk Gibson today. Adam Eaton in center, Aaron Hill at second, Paul Goldschmidt over at first base. Martin Prado takes his glove out to left field today. Miguel Montero behind the plate. Matt Davidson getting another start at third base. Gerardo Parr out in right field. Chris Owings getting a look at shortstop today. And right-handed Randall Delgado on the mound for the D-backs. Luis Jacin, 25-year-old right-hander from Venezuela, his 29th start, a 13-game winner, an ERA just a tick over three. Jacin, three starts ago, took a no-hitter into the seventh inning against the Giants in Colorado, six and two-thirds, the deepest a Rockies pitcher has ever taken a no-hitter at Coors Field. He's had a very good year after some injuries last season. Ball one to Adam Eaton. Yeah, after that near no-no against the Giants, came back two starts later, faced him again, went seven innings, gave up four hits and one run in that start. Rutledge in second. High throw. Pulls Jordan Pacheco off the bag, and Adam Eaton's aboard. Tough play for Rutledge. We saw Aaron Hill make that play, in fact, twice last night. But Spanky's aboard to lead it off for the D-backs. Maybe credited with an infield hit. Looks like a good throw would have gotten him, but an ex exceptional effort there just to get to that ball. Pacheco tries to come back with the tag, but in the estimation of first base umpire Larry Vanover, by the time the tag was applied, Eaton was already on the bag. Well, that's not Larry Vanover. Apparently, I got my umpire rotation messed up. Yeah, they switched him. Uh, Larry came out after the ball game yesterday, and Mark Ripperger is in there okay. first. 
Got the day off. Aaron Hill. <laughs> Big series for Aaron Hill. A three hit night last night, including his 10th home run. Drove in three runs. Aaron has five hits in the series so far. There goes Adam Eaton. Norby Torrealba will not be able to make a throw, and Spanky has the stolen bases, fourth of the season. Well, if uh, Torrealba just makes a throw to second base here and makes any kind of contact, which he did, it looked like his left shin guard came up and hit Aaron Hill as he went down. No, he was well behind there. If you make contact and throw the ball to second base, they'll call the runner out for batter interference on that play. Unless you're Ed Armbrister in the 1975 yeah. World Series with Larry Varnett behind the plate. But you have to make contact with the hitter. The hitter has to be out there inside that batter's box line, and you have to throw the ball. Any of those things not in the equation, it's just a stolen base. Well, Aaron, it was uh, certainly a nice distraction for Adam to get to second. As Aaron kind of went flying there, swinging out of his shoes. A career 382 hitter against Colorado. And we've been keeping a close eye on that right elbow of Aaron Hill throughout the season. Uh, varying degrees of scabs and bruises and bloody messes. It looks like it's fairly well healed up for the time being. Boy, another hard swing by Aaron, and he strikes out one away. Chassin with a couple of different fastballs for Seamer. Throw a sinker, gets a lot of ground balls. Also has a curveball slider change up the full complement of pitches. When he's good, that slider is a good out pitch for him. Having an excellent comeback season after making only 14 starts last year. He missed a large portion of the season with right shoulder inflammation. Here's Goldie. Ooh, that's a two-seam sinker right in on the knuckles of Paul Goldschmidt. I mentioned he throws a lot of grounders. 26 double plays this season. That's the second most in the National League. Only Adam Wainwright has more Ooh. double plays grounded into. Two-seam fastball down and into the right-hand hitter from the right-hand pitcher. Goldie drives that to the gap in left center. Adam Eaton will come in and score, and that is RBI number 110 for the National League leader. It's 1 0 Diamondbacks. There's a comeback in there with another sinker. This time, Paul Goldschmidt turns it up a notch to make sure he gets the barrel on it. And a little soft line drive out into left center field will drive home the first run of the game. Single, a stolen base, and a base hit. Get him on, get him over, get him in. one nothing Arizona. Here's Martin Prado. Now nine ahead of that dude BP in Cincinnati for the National League RBI lead. Goldie two home runs behind Pedro Alvarez for the league lead in homers. Here's Prado. One for eight in the series. 279, 13 homers. He... Drove in a run last night with a sacrifice fly, so that RBI total for the year now a career high 74. Reds up 5 1 over the Brewers in the bottom of the seventh. So far, Phillips, no RBI in that game. All kinds of things to watch for as the season winds down here. Ideally, the, the sort of the goal line with Goldie, if you will, is a 300 average, a home run and an RBI crown. He's got a shot. 0-1-1. Prado hard to left. Base hit. Goalie heads for third. Martin hits second. Three diamond back hits here in the bottom of the first. With the sinker way inside off the plate. And the only way you can get to that pitch is if you're looking for it. Well, that ball was off the plate inside and moving farther in. 
Goldie runs right in the face of Ryan Wheeler out there in left field, which allows Prado to move into scoring position on the tail end. They rule it a double for Martin Prado, his 33rd of the year, and here is Miguel Montero having a big series, a pair of three-hit games so far, including a long home run Friday night, his 11th of the year. Miggy reached base safely in eight straight of plate appearances to open up the series. That was one shy of the D-backs record. Struck out and hit into a double play in his final two times up last night. But eight times up, eight times on base. 244 and 11 homers. He's hit safely in three straight games. Seen Willene Rosario behind the plate for the first two games of this series, but Rosario getting the night off, or the day off, I should say. And your Vittori Alba, the veteran, is behind the plate. Jonathan Herrera, a little late getting to third base to cover, and Goldie is back in time. No throw from Torrey Alba. A lot of guys in the different positions for the Rockies. Herrera in there at third. We saw Wheeler in left. Rutledge getting the start at second. Dickerson, who started in left Friday night, is in right today. And Torrey Alba, the catcher. Pacheco at first, no Helton. There's a strike, two and two. This is what the Rockies look like defensively. You know, a lot of new names out there for the series finale. Yeah, Wheeler in left, Dickerson in center, Blackman in right field. You mentioned Herrera and Tulowitzki on the left side of the infield. Rutledge and Pacheco on the right side. Your beat Torrey Alba behind the plate for the right-hander, Julius Chassin. Take a look at the splits for an opposing pitcher uh, going into a ball game, and for Chassin, uh, usually a good indicator is how does a guy do against the other team's number three and four hitters? And on the season, Chassin has held the three and four off opposing hitters to a 235 batting average. Those are generally the two spots in the order where most managers will put their best hitter in the three spot and their most productive hitter in the four spot. Chassin has been good against those particular spots in the opposing lineup. They walk to Montero, and the bases are full of Diamondbacks with one out for Matt Davidson. Now back, third base, number 24, Matt Davidson. Matt Davidson, a pair of hits last night. He singled, doubled, and scored a run. Paul Goldschmidt, the runner at third, Martin Prado at second, and Miguel Montero at first. A run already in. A reminder, fans, every time a Diamondbacks player hits a home run this season, Fulton Holmes will donate $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. Oh, and 2 Matt hitting 250 over his last six games. That includes five starts. Big RBI spot right here. He swings and misses at three, and that's the second strikeout in the inning 
for Jolie's Chasim, two down, and Gerardo Parra will come up to bat. On the season, five for 11 with the bases loaded. That's a 455 batting average. Hopefully, come through with a big one right here. Add on. Well, he certainly had a big night last night. Couple of RBI doubles. He drove in three and scored a run. 267 and 10 homers. Bases loaded, two outs. into the first to row of seats behind the Diamondback dugout. And fans are being attended to down there by the Chase Field staff, which always responds immediately to such situations. So Parra steps back in with a 1-1 count. He backs three hits in the inning. One run is in. Two and one. Eaton singled and stole second. He came in on a Goldie RBI single. Prado doubled. And Montero walked. So it's bases full, two outs, and a 2 1 count to Gerardo Parra. Goldie at third, Prado at second, Mickey at first. Sacks springs into action and oh the old instincts. He had a handful of uh, elbow and wrist and ankle guards over there. Pretty tough to make a play. It's running a sporting goods store down there. When Chassin gets into trouble, he really goes to his off-speed stuff. A lot of change-ups, a lot of hard sliders. Nobody on, nobody out. He's just going to pound that sinker in there, look for ground balls. It's two big strikeouts with the bases loaded to leave them loaded, but the Diamondbacks get one on Paul Goldschmidt's 110th RBI to lead the National League and throw one. It's a 1-0 Diamondbacks lead.
Todd Helton. Who announced today he will retire at the end of this, his 17th Major League season. 2,505 hits, 367 homers, a lifetime 317 hitter. The Todd Father, five time All Star. And five years from now, certainly to be on a lot of Hall of Fame ballots. How about this one? All kinds of stats in the Rockies media notes today, as you would expect, uh, about Todd Helton. 20,579 chances at first base. He made 79 errors. Three gold gloves. BB, we're getting some uh, Cold Stone delivered in the booth right now. How about this? Nice. The ice cream fairies are here. Just what we needed. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? Well, thanks for coming by. Very nice. Right, I'm going to have some. I'm, you know. There they are. Where are you? Hey, you guys, come say hey, hi to the. Everybody wave. Where's the cameras? Oh, look. Napkins. Very important. <laughs> hey, you guys, the camera's way down, down there. Wait a minute. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. you got to say hi. Hi to everybody. Wave, everybody say hi. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Not a bad gig. They bring ice cream yeah. right to you. Not that. Ryan Wheeler. Our thanks uh, to our great friends at Cold Stone. Make sure you don't bring any to Leo. None for Leo. We're going head-to-head -head in fantasy football. Two and two to Wheeler. Shoots that one into shallow left. Here comes Prado on the run. Cracks it down, one away. One out in the second for Randall Delgado. Here's Jordan Pacheco. Just find that number for Helton amazing. Nearly 21,000 chances, and he only made 79 errors. I made four in one inning. <laughs> just for perspective. Yeah, just to kind of put things into perspective. <laughs> and he was playing that first base at Coors where you're fighting that sun all the time. Oh, all the, the first, time. What, first yeah. three or four innings or so? Every night. As it sets behind third base, uh, the first baseman looks directly into the sun if he's trying to feel the throw from third base or shortstop or the pitcher. All kinds of elements to deal with at Coors Field. Up the middle. For Owings behind the bag. They retire Pacheco. Two down. Four in a row set down by Randall Delgado. Here's the catcher, your Vittorio Alba. Torrealba just four hits in his last 41 at bats. He's at 234 on the year. At the age of 35, has played sparingly. This is his 45th start. His 13th big league season, originally a giant. He has played with the Rockies, the Giants, the Rangers. The Padres, the Mariners, the Brewers, and the Blue Jays. Last season alone, he played Texas, Toronto, and Milwaukee. When you get to that stage of your career as a catcher, and... Uh, Tori Alba can still do some things to help a team win, but his main value is mentoring Willene Rosario. And it's probably a full time job. Wow, well, absolutely. I mean, you think of guys like Henry Blanco, who kind of has bounced from team to team to team, but usually ends up with a ball club that has a young catcher that needs some help learning the ropes. And uh, Tori Alba, at this stage of his career, has kind of fallen into that category as a mentor. Well, I remember Henry Blanco. Only a couple of weeks ago, who still has the greatest nick nickname in baseball history, Hank White, was catching for the Mariners, and he caught Taiwan Walker. 
their pitching phenom. And Blanca was 42, Walker was 21. <laughs> Twice his age. Called strike three, first strikeout for Randall Delgado, who works a 1 2 3 second. He's got a 1 0 lead. CenturyLink, your link to watch next. Coming up, we'll see Chris Owings making his first Chase Field start today. Ram Trucks, proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Set for the bottom of the second, the Diamondbacks with three hits in the first, lead at 1 0. And Chris Owens will lead off against Jolie's Chasin. Chris in his first career start here at Chase Field. He started several games on the last road trip. He's come in as a pinch hitter or a defensive substitution, but this is his first start at shortstop here. And what uh, we hope will be his home ballpark for a long time. And it's been a good start. 294 on the year, 5 for 17 this season. In fact, Chris has reached base in eight of his last 15 plate appearances, including five hits. Boy, Chasin BB has generated a lot of swings and misses so far. Well, that slider's a swing and a miss pitch for him. His straight changeup can be a swing and a miss pitch. We haven't seen the big over the top curveball. That's usually a pitch he breaks out second or third time through the order. On the ground is second. Rutledge. And the edge of the outfield grass has it one away. And we're told as the season has progressed, he's gone more and more to that two-seamer and the hard slider because those two pitches generate more ground balls than anything else, trying to be a little more efficient with his pitches, ideally working a little bit deeper in the game for the Rockies. Well, between the four-seam fastball and the two-seam fastball, he's throwing those pitches about 65% of the time. Randall Delgado looks at a strike. Randall has five hits on the year, five for 26. Enormous difference for Jolice Chassin this season has been command. He's always been a guy throughout his career who walked people. In fact, at least four walks per nine innings pitch this year. That walks per nine rate has dropped from over four to barely two per nine. And this is a guy who two years ago led the National League in walks. That part of his game has been very much improved this year as a 25-year-old.
Off-speed pitch there, and he strikes out Delgado. Four strikeouts now for Jolice Chassin. Two away in the second. Last chance to vote for the ongoing weekend-long AT&T Twitter poll question. Your favorite extra inning game this year. And the Yankee game has been the popular choice. I, myself, I think I would vote for the Cardinal game way back on April 3rd, which was the longest game in the history of this ballpark. Among other long games on that series, 16 innings at Pittsburgh, 18 in Philadelphia, longest game in franchise history. Or that dramatic July 4th game against the Mets at City Field. Some good choices there. So long gone to at Fox Sports Arizona on the Twitter, I should say, and tweet your vote. Adam Eaton singled, stole a base, and scored a run his first time up. Bob mentioned Chassin coming off a very good start last Monday at San Francisco. Seven innings, only four hits. After almost no hitting the Giants in a start at Coors Field. And this is a guy that will go deep into ball games. He has gone at least seven innings in nine of his last ten starts and allowed more than three runs only twice. In his last 17 starts, he's had an excellent year. Rutledge charges, and it's a 1-2-3 second. Chassin has retired five in a row. It's 1-0 Diamondbacks. to face the bottom of the Rockies order and Kirk Gibson talking this morning about what he expected from Delgado today. Would he bounce back from that outing in L.A. as he's having the conversation there with Paul Goldschmidt. And he said that, yes, that is one of the few times we've seen him get rattled, giving up those four home runs in Los Angeles. But overall, big picture, they are very pleased with what they've seen from Randall all year long. He's throwing more strikes. That was number one. That was a focus in spring training. Also, just learning to be a pitcher. He did make a comparison, though, between between the execution of pitches between Patrick Corbin and Randall Delgado. He said when Patrick misses, it's on the corners. When Randall misses, he's missing middle. That's something that he's got to correct. Absolutely, Jody. And we've mentioned when he does miss middle with the, maybe some of those change-ups, they get hit a long way. And that has been the issue this year. Other than that, Randall uh, has had starts where he's been superb, looked very good at times. Just misses there. And in terms of getting rattled, Bob, that's one of the things I like about Randall. He's a great kid. And you can rarely tell by body language if he's winning or losing the game, which I think is a plus. 
So oftentimes guys get upset out there and Jorge De La Rosa from the Rockies will throw a tantrum out on the mound if things aren't going well. But Randall is always very composed. And there are very few pitchers that come to the major league level as a finished product. Everybody has something to work on, especially the young guys. Randall's got good stuff. He's got good poise, as you mentioned, out there on the mound. But occasionally his command can get him into some trouble. So he knows what he needs to work on going into this offseason and next spring. And hopefully he'll continue to improve in that area. And I mean, all the pieces are there. There's no question about it. He's got the right mental makeup out there on the mound. He's got good enough stuff to win at this level consistently. Just a matter of being a little more fine with his command. And you, you mentioned it too. You forget he's only 23 years old. He's still a kid. But there's a lot to like. Jolice Chassin. Pretty good hitter actually. 11 for 59 on the year. You wouldn't know it from that swing per se. But he's got five RBIs. I noticed Randall when he took his at bat in the bottom half of the second inning and ultimately struck out did not have his glasses on but out on the mound now he it does. <laughs> Maybe it says something about his uh, hitting approach just close your eyes and swing hard you might hit it. <laughs> Apparently Jacin is from the same school. Yeah. Seven in a row set down by Randall Delgado he's got two strikeouts. Now, yeah, you're right. No glasses. He's trying to write, find the right combination. Yeah, I want to see it, but maybe I don't want to see it. Maybe an eye patch. <laughs> I'll meet you in the middle. Here's Charlie Blackman who flied out his first time. Charlie Blackman two for nine in the series. He was hitless with three strikeouts in the leadoff spot last night. Had a pair of hits in Friday's series opener, including a two run triple. There was a change up that got away from Delgado and missed up. I think that's a big lesson Randall has hopefully learned this season moving forward. If you're going to miss, miss in your favor. If you're trying to throw a change up down in the strike zone and you miss, miss farther down, bounce it in the dirt. If you're trying to elevate a four seam fastball, you know, across the top of the strike zone and you miss, miss higher. Don't miss down in the middle of the zone. I think that's what Kurt Gibson was referring to when talking about Patrick Corbin. When he misses, he misses in his favor, not in the hitter's favor. And the other difference there, too, we talked about Brandon McCarthy a couple of starts ago and how Brandon would really like to incorporate a more frequent change up a pitch that right now he's trying to find a grip that he trusts with. And throws it only four or five percent of the time. The changeup for Randall is a big part of who he is. He throws that pitch almost 30 percent of the time. So that's quite a big difference too. More opportunities to make mistakes. Right. Blackman's aboard with a two-out single, and he's going to head into second base. Got the Diamondbacks napping a bit there. And he might have taken a glove in the head from Chris Owings. Ball spanked hard right back up the middle of the field. Eaton a little lackadaisical there as he got to the ball and just lollipopped it back into the cut. Man, that throw should go all the way into second base and he should get to it a lot quicker than he did. Blackman's head went into Owen's hip. Looks like Mark Sanchez. <laughs> Cranked his neck a little bit. They rule out a double for Blackman. Streak of seven in a row, retired by Delgado. And here's
Mariners had a meeting in center field fielding this one. You don't see a lot of doubles on routine grounders to center. You see just kind of jogging over there, plays it casually, flips the ball back into the cut man, and Blackman never broke stride, never slowed down. I mean, that's the kind of base running play we expect to see from Adam Eaton. Yeah. He should know. Yeah, it looks like Charlie Blackman will be okay. At the plate, second baseman, Josh, Josh Rutledge is up. He doubled his uh, first time up. Rutledge mentioned he had been sent down to the minors near the end of May to make room for DJ LeMahieu, who was uh, essentially taken over that second base job. Rutledge came back to the big leagues in the middle of June, was up again for about a month, but uh, then he hit only 143, so it was back to AAA near the end of July. And he's up right now for the third time this year with September roster expansion. Trying to refine his game. Had a very good rookie year last year as a 23-year-old and seemed like he had staked a claim to that second base spot. Played 73 games at 274. Came up in the middle of July last year and stuck. And they have gone through second baseman in Colorado. Rolled to short, Owings. They strand the two-out double. Gets us to the home half of the third. It's 1-0 Diamondbacks. Sends your link, your link to what's next. When we come back, Aaron Hill, Paul Goldschmidt, and Martin Prado. Goldie now with 110. It's 1 0 D backs. Dogs bigger than others. Another bark in the park day here at Chase Field. Canine companions in the park. All they want to do is chase the ball. Aaron Hill. <laughs> well, amazing all these bark in the park days all over the major leagues that uh, none has ever gotten loose. Not that we know of. You can recall. <laughs> One and one to Aaron Hill, who struck out his first time. Hill, Goldie, Prado, two, three, and four. Aaron Hill, three straight multi-hit games. He has really responded following a day off last week when he was scuffling through a four for 36 stretch. Got a day off and then had three straight games with uh, more than one hit. And he's in three and one. This was Aaron Hill last night, number 10. BB. He touched one off, sinker down and in. He just golfed it out of here deep over the bullpen in left field. Ball four, leadoff walk. Second walk issued by Jolice Jacine. 
Anytime the D-back scores six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with a purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. I wonder if the kid in the taco suit is here again today. <laughs> Brought us some luck last night. Sure did. He showed up dressed as a taco and we had tacos. Bet you'll have to pick those up on your way uh, home tonight. The timing should be just about perfect. Honey, don't worry about dinner. I've got it taken care of as long as you can get by on a half a taco. Because I'm eating the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Goldie and RBI single his first time. Last night, a walk, a triple. He scored a run. He's been on base. Counting today now six times in the series. He's hit in five straight. Creeping back up toward 300. Now this was last night. This guy we were talking about when we got to six dressed as a taco. Nice work. Cheddar cheese on there, the lettuce. Goldie drives that to center. Dickerson backing up at the wall. And that ball is. There is no signal. Now they're saying home run. That's a home run for Paul Goldsmith. 22 games without a homer, and Goldie has gone yard number 32. It's a Fulton home run. That's another $150 to Central Arizona Mountain Rescue right off the top of that yellow line. A resounding crack off the bat of Paul Goldschmidt. You knew that one was going to go a long way. It was just a question of how far. Right off the top of the ledging out there where that yellow stripe cuts across the batter's eye in center field. A little bit of a delay as third base umpire made his way out there to make the call, but Paul Goldschmidt touched one off. So that's Goldie's first home run since August 20th at Cincinnati. It had been 22 games. Martin Prado a double his first time up. Goldie usually doesn't care about such things, but we do. Pedro Alvarez did not homer in the Pirates game today as Martin Prado spanks one through the left side of the infield. So Paul Goldschmidt now one behind Pedro Alvarez for the National League lead. Jim Wright, the pitching coach. This is very uncharacteristic of the way Joe Lee Chassin has pitched lately. We mentioned he's a, just been outstanding. Flirted with a no no at Coors Field last time out. Only four hits in seven innings against the Giants. He's allowed more than three runs only twice in his last 17 starts, and he's down 3 0. And still no one out here in the third. Gail Montero walked his first time up. Huh? Mickey has it safely in three straight games. He's batting about 340. In the 14 games since he came back from that back injury that kept him out of the lineup for a month. He missed almost all of August.
Roof and panels closed here, downtown Phoenix. A walk, a homer, and a single so far in the Arizona third. Tulowitzki, Rutledge at second. And they get the double play quickly, two outs. Well, you mentioned BB and double play ball has been a big weapon for Chassin and he uh, got some help there. And number 27 on the season for Chassin. I, I think it's interesting too. Jim Wright, the pitching coach, made a visit to the mound, and all of a sudden Chassin just sink or sink or sink or sink. <laughs> he gave up the home run on a high four seam fastball that Goldie hit to straightaway center field. Some other hard hit balls in this game on off speed pitches. Probably went out there and reminded him, "Hey, you're a sinker ball pitcher. Let's get back to bread and butter here." Matt Davidson has swung at four pitches so far and has yet to make contact. All four sliders. Hard to short to Lewinsky. Tough hop, fields it cleanly. And we are through the third, but the Diamondbacks add two more. Paul Goldschmidt, his 32nd. Home run of the year, now 112 RBIs. It's 3 0 D backs. right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Corey Dickerson leads off the fourth. Diamondbacks lead at three nothing. All three runs driven in by Paul Goldschmidt, an RBI single in the first, a two-run home run in the third, is 32nd of the year. Dickerson, Tulowitzki, Wheeler, three, four, and five against Randall Delgado. Who so far has given up only two hits, doubles by Rutledge in the first and Blackman in the third. Corey Dickerson flied out in a pinch hit appearance last night. He had a three hit game batting from the leadoff spot in Friday's series opener. Two singles and a double, he scored a run in that game. And he's been swinging a hot bat lately in the three hole today. Last 16 games, hitting almost 350. Two and one.
although he doesn't look like it physically, Corey Dickerson, big time home run hitter in the minor leagues for the Rockies, had a 32 homer season back in 2011 at Asheville in only 106 games. Not sure about that ballpark. I've never been to Asheville, but uh, 32 homers is 32 homers. <laughs> He started the season in Triple A Colorado Springs, hit 371 there, and slugged over 630. Pops it up to left field. Prado's been busy out there. And that's the first out. Let's go to Los Angeles now for a Fox Sports 1 game break. Shortstop, Troy Tubowitzki. Wow, Hunter Pence, seven RBIs last night. <laughs> Home run today, free agency, straight ahead. Yeah, the Giants started uh, opening conversations about a possible extension for Hunter Pence, and he has just absolutely gone off. He loves to feel loved. And with their offensive issues, and they are somewhat offensively challenged, there's going to be a pretty decent backlash there if they don't resign him, you would think. I mean, he's always been a very popular player no matter where he plays just because of uh, his style of play, the way he goes about his business. I mean, there is no doubting that Hunter Pence is giving you everything he's got on every play, both offensively and defensively. And certainly the fans in San Francisco have uh, kind of fallen in love with that kind of effort. Tula off the glove of Aaron Hill and into right. Tulowitzki's aboard. Very hard hit to second base. And in comparison... Take Tulowitzki, for example, no fault of his own. He's had some serious injury issues. Hunter Pence plays every day. Every day. That's the third hit for Colorado. Tulowitzki's aboard. Here's Ryan Wheeler, the former Diamondback. And durability is a, something to take into consideration. It's part of the package. And Tulo is... A, had a fractured rib earlier this summer. He's had very serious groin injuries in recent years. It's changed who he is as a player somewhat. Prado again in left. A lot of very shallow pop-ups to left field. Harmless fly balls. Randall Delgado keeping it in the yard. That's the second out. Brings up Jordan Pacheco. First baseman, Jordan Pacheco. That's a five put out so far through three and two-third for Martin Prado in left field. Opened up the first, the second, the third, and the fourth with fly ball outs to left field. Pacheco grounded a short his first time. Jordan Pacheco for a long time now has been promising but kind of extra bat that the Rockies have just not been able to find a consistent spot for. And that has in all likelihood affected his offense this year. He was hitting under 230 at the end of July when he was sent down to AAA. Hard to third. Davidson. They go the short way, and that's the inning. They strand the one-out single. Bottom four on the way. Diamondbacks lead the Rockies 3-0.
Halifax Baseball is presented by Sanderson Ford. Good day to bring the kids out to Chase Field. Mark the park day as well. Series finale against the Colorado Rockies. Last time we'll see the Rockies at Chase Field in 2013. D-backs have three more to play. And that'll be at Colorado next weekend. Gerardo Parra leads off the fourth. Parra Owings Delgado 7-8-9. Diamondbacks about hit the Rockies 5-3. They lead it 3-0. Goldie, an RBI single in the first, and a two-run homer to straightaway center in the third. His 32nd of the year. Now one behind Pedro Alvarez for the league lead. And that's exactly, it went like that to center and kind of hit right off the wall and kicked off the top. Exactly. Right off the yellow line in straightaway center. Here's the home run tote board. Boy, Dominic Brown, what a year for him. Parra drives that to the gap in right center. And that rolls to the pool. Gerardo Parra will head for three. And he's in there. Gerardo Parra bringing the want, his fourth triple. Just never content with what he should get. Gets out of the box fast. Most runners or most batters at that point are thinking, well, I hit myself a double. Yeah, not Gerardo Parra. I can make it 90 more feet, put myself in scoring position at third base with nobody out in the inning, and here we go. Looks like he got his left hand caught up a little bit as he started his slide right there. Grin on his face. Hopefully he's okay. He might have gone in standing up. He'll put the oven mitt on there. And here's Chris Owings trying to get an RBI. Yeah, Matt Williams uh, had both arms up above his head, telling Prada or Par rather, "You're you're okay. You can come into third base standing up and finish that triple with a head first slide. It feels like you've really accomplished something." <laughs> and it looks cooler too. The whole Pete Rose thing. So a chance here for Chris to get his first major league RBI with Par at third. First ever start at Chase Field would be a great time to get your first major league run batted in. This is inside there. It's one and one. Sixty pitches now for Jolie's Chasine. The command has not quite been there. Only 37 for strikes. He has labored out there. He's already walked two. And given up six hits. Swing and a miss. Two and two. He has done a lot of that so far. Generating a lot of swings and misses. It's full. I'll tell you what, for Chris Owings, in the limited playing time he's had since coming here to the major leagues, I mean, coming up from AAA, player of the year in the Pacific Coast League, hit 330. We knew he had good hand eye coordination, good quick swing, but his pitch recognition has been a lot better than I anticipated. Lays right off there. that one, yeah. yeah. A lot of young guys would have been ready to swing at anything close to the plate in that count, but he takes that slider off the plate low and away and takes the walk. That's the third walk from Chasin. Well, so often when you see young guys like that, BB, and you hear, well, they never walk, they don't take walks, you think of them as wild free swingers. Chris is he's kind of a unique guy. He's just an aggressive hitter. He attacks early in the count. And, you know, they would... We're told like him to be a little more patient and try and draw more frequent bases on balls. But he hasn't been one of those young out of control swing at anything guys. Back with you tomorrow first to four against the Dodgers Diamondbacks live pregame show at six o'clock here on Fox Sports Arizona.
Brandon McCarthy will pitch the third game in that series against Clayton Kershaw. Cahill and Ryu tomorrow. And then how about this? Tuesday, Patrick Corbin, Zach Greinke. Should be an exciting series. 0 and 1. Guessing Delgado will continue to bunt even in the two strike count. Well, the biggest uh, worry you have here is a double play ball and take yourself out of a potential big inning. Nope. He strikes out Delgado for the second time. Now five strikeouts for Chasin, and this is the schedule for the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Ryu Cahill tomorrow. Then there's that Tuesday showdown. Granke and Corbin pair of 14 game winners. Brandon McCarthy who's been outstanding lately takes on Clayton Kershaw and that 1-9-4 ERA. And Ricky Nolasco who had been having a terrific series but was knocked all over the yard his last time out. He'll face Wade Miley Thursday. That's a day game here at Chase Field. One away in the fourth. Top of the order, Adam Eaton is one for two. He has singled and grounded out. He scored the Diamondbacks' first run back in the first. Looks at a strike, 0 1. Well, and thinking about that upcoming Dodger series, we know for a fact there's going to be a lot of blue jerseys, a lot of Dodger fans here at Chase Field. We encourage you, D backs fans, to come out here and shout them down. Arnold Parr at third after his triple to lead off the inning. Chris Owings at first after a walk. Yeah, we got to keep these people under control. We stress civility, politeness. Yeah. D-back Nation is a is an attentive group. We we played the right way on both sides of the ball. But let's make this place red and not blue. Have great crowds here all weekend long for the Rockies series. Should be even better against the Dodgers. This is there, one and one. There you go. A strict to training program for the kids. It's all under control. I'm surprised we haven't seen our relief pitchers out there working out at some point this year. You know, going the wrong way up the sliding board or some other ill advised activity. Glenn Sherlock wouldn't allow it. He'd be out there with his clipboard. Get off that swing. <laughs> Things appear to be under control out there. Chris Owings is uh, two for two in stolen base attempts this year. Speed is part of his game. He's a 20 stolen base guy over the course of a full year. Back, stay away from that double play here, whether it's starting Owings at first base or Adam Eaton cutting down on a swing a little bit just to make sure he puts that ball in play somewhere. But got to get down that first baseline, make sure that run scores from third. Stay away from the double play. Pitch number 70 on the way from Jolie's Chasin.
Nice block by Tori Alba. He spiked that one. And it's two and two. 70 pitches, 43 for strikes. Adam Eaton, four hits in the series. He had an RBI double and scored a run last night. The numbers on Chassin, who's had excellent command all year long, but uh, that's not been the case here today. Two and two. Aaron Hill waited for that young lady to come over to him. Go ahead. I'm not just going to toss it to you. You come here and you can take it. I'll give it to you. Nice job. It's 4 nothing. That would have ended the inning. Instead, the run comes across. And you don't see that a whole lot. Taylor made, and Tulowitzki botched it. I think Tulo realized he was really going to have to hurry on this comebacker to the mound. He had good speed at first, good speed at the batter's box, and Tulowitzki just never had control of that baseball. Brian Gorman out there at second base immediately signaling safe. So many times on those potential double plays, uh, they call the guy out automatically at second base, but you can see he never had control of that baseball. So Parra scores the fourth Diamondbacks run, and here's Aaron Hill, who has struck out, walked, and scored 0 for 1. That is an error on the shortstop. Adam Eaton safe at first. 1 0 to Aaron Hill. It's only the seventh error on the season in 100 and, you know, 115 games for Troy Tulowitzki. Normally a very sure handed shortstop has a cannon for a throwing arm, but I think just got a little bit ahead of himself that time trying to turn that double play. Another pickoff was uh, in the making there. Jordan Pacheco had snuck in behind Adam Eaton at first base. Tori Alba had his body turned, was ready to catch that pitch, and fire down to first base when Aaron Hill fouled it away. Of communication issues between Tori Alba and Chassin, and they'll have to talk it over. Chassin, by all rights, should be out of the inning. He did a good job. Come back or fielded it cleanly, made a good, accurate throw. But he's still out there with two on and one out and a run in. And now has to work his way through the heart of the Diamondbacks' order, potentially. With ducks on the pond. Goldie, as usual, has got the back foot up against that railing behind the on deck circle. Two and one to Aaron Hill. Two and two.
Chase Field on a Sunday afternoon in downtown Phoenix. And he strikes out Aaron Hill for the second time today. That's six strikeouts for Jolie's Jaseed. And with two on and two out, here's Goldie, who's driven in three today. This was Goldie, his last at bat, third inning, number 32 on the air, off the yellow line in center. He had an RBI single in his first at bat, so two for two. He's driven in three, now at 112 to lead the league. One more knock, and he'll get over that 300 mark again. Might as well make it a home run. That way you tie Alvarez and there you go. make it a clean sweep. Not to mention it would mean tacos. Well, I'll tell you what, on the way home, you could uh, negotiate that. Say, look, I'm here to pick up three. I'd like my three for tomorrow early so Joan could have some. Yeah, I won't bother you tomorrow, but uh, if I can have my three... And three, three plus three. I mean, Jones got to eat two. And then she could have one whole taco. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Goldie to the gap in left center. That gets down. Chris Owens will score. Adam Eaton will score. And Goldie's in its second with a two-run double. And it's six-nothing Diamondbacks. And Bob Brindley is headed to the drive through <laughs> That, but Goldie is a triple away from the cycle after three at bats in this ball game. A single, a two run homer, now a two run double. Yeah, bring the dogs to the ballpark every day for Goldie. Well, the big dog is eating here today. He's got five RBIs. Martin Prado. Prado's two for two, a double and a single. This is fun. Let's keep this going. Rockies bullpen still quiet. Parr a triple to lead off the inning. Chris Owings walked. Delgado struck out. Eaton hit a comebacker to the mound. That should have gotten the Rockies out of the inning. Chasin fielded it cleanly. Tulowitzki dropped the transfer. Everybody was safe. And instead of being out of the inning after striking out Aaron Hill, Chasin gives up a two-run double to Goldie. Those two runs would not have scored if uh, the Rockies had converted that double play opportunity. And the Diamondbacks right here with a chance to make it seven. One and two. Coming up on 30 pitches in this inning. That's another byproduct of that missed double play chance. Left field, Ryan Wheeler's out there. And that's the inning. But the Diamondbacks add to their total, and they lead it 6-0.
participating Circle K locations, purchase two 28-ounce Gatorade or G2 thirst quenchers for your chance to sign a one-day contract at your very own press conference. Attend batting practice, get a customized jersey, and so much more. Gatorade win from within. And I highly encourage you, when you do have the press conference, to throw a tantrum. Turn the table over, scream at guys, get bleeped out, leave the room, storm off, get your money's worth. Randall Delgado back out there for the fifth. He's got a 6-0 lead. He's given up only three hits. He's got two strikeouts. He'll work to Yorvi Torrealba, Jonathan Herrera in the pitcher's spot, 7-8-9 in the Rockies' fifth. Torrealba struck out looking his first time. He's 0-1. for 1. So far, so good for Randall in terms of avoiding the home run ball. Don't want to jinx him. Don't let anybody panic. But it's something to keep an eye on. 55 pitches so far, 36 for strikes. Colorado bullpen stirring. Matt Belisle is uh, doing the Zumba class out there, and Wilton Lopez is throwing the right-hander. Nice location there for Randall. It's two and two. Done a good job of not issuing any free passes. He does have one balk in the game. That didn't come back to bite him. Randall Delgado has walked more than one batter in a start only four times all year. Last year in Atlanta, he walked more than four batters per nine innings. This year, that uh, number is less than two per nine. Left center field, Prado. Martin Prado! That's an out. <laughs> they weren't sure. The umpires waited until they could make sure, and Martin, sure enough, caught that for out number one. Let's make that our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. He's been busy out there. That's he really sure. has been, and he's been a smooth defender in left field. Maybe doesn't have the kind of foot speed that you see from a lot of outfielders in the big leagues, but he goes right to the spot. Very soft on his feet. His head's not bouncing all over the place. He's made some nice plays as a left fielder this year. And in this ball game, because he's had to, BB, the Rockies in all five innings so far in the ball game have started the inning with a fly ball out to left field. <laughs> I mean, I hope he's all right. That's not a pretty face. Keeps tweaking that left knee. He might just be... I think he's just clowning around. Let's hope so. Got some dirt in there. Jolice Jacine has been struggling. Six runs on seven hits through four. His spot is due up next, and Charlie Culberson is in the on-deck circle for the Rockies, so he will hit for Chassin. And uh, Wil Wilton Lopez was throwing, so he may come on to start the fifth inning. We'll see. But in any event, Culberson is on deck, and it looks like Chassin is done for the day. Mentioned how Randall Delgado had avoided the walk, and sure enough, there's a one-out walk. So here's Charlie Culberson. Culberson singled, struck out in two at-bats last night. He had a few misadventures out there in the outfield as well. Three for 16 is a pinch hitter for Walt Weiss this season. 
Yeah, Rockies are one of those teams. They've got a lot of decisions to make on a lot of different players, and I'm sure Walt Weiss is going to use this last week and a half of the season to mix and match and rotate and put guys in situations and try to make a determination going into spring training next year exactly how it all best fits together. You sure have a lot of pieces, you know, guys like Blackman and Dickerson and Culberson and Pacheco. They like Rutledge still. You've got LeMahieu who's taken over the second base job. A lot of bats in there. Got to find some spots for some guys. Hard to left. Prado at the wall. And that ball is out of here. The home run bites Randall Delgado. Charlie Culberson a pinch hit homer. His second home run this year. The Rockies are on the board. It's a 6-2 ball game. A line drive homer that just did clear the fence and left. Right, that was uh, what the players call a fast homer. Pitch down and in. Culberson just drops ahead of the bat. That's very reminiscent of Aaron Hill's home run last night on a sinker down and in. Hill hit a towering drive to left field. That one a liner into the second row. Here's Charlie Blackman, 6 2 ball game now. The home run certainly hurts, but it's doubly compounded when you walk the number eight hitter ahead of the pinch hitter. You don't want to let the Rockies creep too far back into this ball game, obviously, but uh, Walt Weiss has got some weapons off the bench today, as you can imagine. The National League's leading hitter in Michael Kadire, DJ LeMay, Hughes swung a good bat all season. Willene Rosario, one of the best offensive catchers in the game. You got that guy Todd Helton available over there off the bench today as well. Yeah, what's he ever done? <laughs> Went down and got it, knocks it into center. So all with a one out here, a walk, a homer, and a single. Just a meeting at the mound now. Miggy goes out to try to break up the rhythm a little bit. Not a bad pitch. That ball sinking off the outside corner. A little change up fading away from Blackman. He just reached out there, poked it into center field for a base hit. Randall Delgado. I'm sorry, Bob. Looking for that first win since August 2nd. It's been a while. And you don't want to... Let this one get away here with the heart of the order coming up. Yeah, that may have been part of Miggy's uh, meeting out there at the mound. The home run we showed you was a sinker down and in. Not a bad pitch. Wasn't elevated up out over the plate where Randall usually gets hurt. And then the base hit by Blackman on a good change up fading off the plate low and away. Just stuck the bat out there. Poked it into center field. Rutledge has doubled and grounded out. One for two. So Randall Delgado is now allowed at least one home run in 12 of his 17 starts this year. And in six of those starts, he's given up multiple home runs, including his last time out when the Dodgers hit four against him. Swing and a miss there. It's one and two. Popped him up first base side, drifting into shallow right. Aaron Hill has a beat on it. That's the second out. Brings up Corey Dickerson, who's 0 for 2. They just want to give you fans a heads up. If you've got nothing to do later on today, the Mobile Bay Bears playing for the Southern League Championship, looking for their third consecutive Southern League Championship in a row. That game tees off at uh, 7.05. Birmingham time. Who's pitching? Do you know? Uh, I'll find out momentarily. I'm not sure who's taking the mound tonight. And also in a related story, Archie Bradley was named Southern Year pitch, Southern League Pitcher of the Year today. He's on the right track, that's for sure. Of 
Corey Dickerson hit only 212 during the first half of the year, but since the All-Star break, he's hit over 320. Third out of first. Blackman is back in time. Well, the easy answer to your question, who's pitching for Mobile today? All hands on deck. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> it's an elimination game, all hands on deck. That's what you would have said if you were the manager in the pregame news conference. Oh, yeah. Did you have a go-to line, by the way, when you were? Everybody has one of those escape-out clauses they always go to when they get in trouble. Davidson in foul ground near the seats. He's got room. Came back to him, and that's the inning. But the Rockies get two on Charlie Culberson's first career pinch hit home run. Century Lake Yearling to what's next coming up for the Diamondbacks. It's Miggy time having a big series. Set for the fifth inning. Fun times at the RamTrucks.com pool area here at Chase Field. People just kind of chilling out there, enjoying the Diamondbacks' 6-2 lead. And the new pitcher for the Rockies in relief of Jolice Jacine. This is the right-hander, Wilton Lopez. Boy, 72 appearances. This guy's a workhorse. And has been throughout his career. Miguel Montero leads it off. Miggy has walked and hit into a double play. Montero, Davidson, Para, 5, 6, and 7. Rolled up the line at first. Jordan Pacheco stumbles but recovers, and that's the first out. Starting pitcher for the Bay Bears tonight in the clinching game five of that Southern League championship is Braden Hagens. Gentleman went 11 and 8 during the regular season with a 347. 148 innings, surrendered 147 hits, 93 strikeouts. Go get them, Bay Bears. Nice. The backs organization had a great year in its minor league system last season with all those championships. Bay Bears trying to repeat. Well, you said uh, you were telling me before the game about South Bend, right? Did yeah. they finish up? Yeah, they were uh, eliminated. They were playing Quad Cities, I believe. I'm pretty oh. sure that one went three and out. Quad Cities. I hear that's twice as nice as the Twin Cities. <laughs> Hard to argue with that. <laughs> Davidson ahead 2-0. and oh. He has struck out and grounded out. In the air to left, drifting back is Wheeler at the wall, and that ball is gone! Matt Davidson's first Major League home run! All right, Matt, that's 
Lorenzo Fulton home run, another $150 to Central Arizona Mountain Rescue. And Matt Davidson, the D-backs third base prospect, is on the board with his first big league homer. And here comes the silent treatment. Look at Parra selling it, or Prado. Look at Prado. He's just going to stand in front of him, turn his back to him, eat some seeds. Nothing. Parr shoots that down the line and left. And that ball is off the wall, but foul. There you go. Ah, we were just kidding. Oh, Matt Davidson had a home run taken away in Philadelphia. Roger Bernardina, he hit one off. Roy Halliday that went out to center in Citizens Bank Park. Bernadina put his arm over the wall and took it away. And Matt has redemption here, his first major league home run. So Matt is a one for three today. His hair is three for five. Oh, yeah, his hair has a good day every day. <laughs> Parra tripled and scored his last time up, one for two. Fists it toward left. Herrera in foul ground. That's the second out. Brings up Chris Owings. Chris walked and scored his last time. Chris Owings. Oh, look at that. Uh -huh. I don't recall Lassie ever high-fiving Timmy. <laughs> That's next level. There's the strikeout. We are through five. Diamondbacks lead at 7-2. Matt Davidson, his first major league home run.
RBIs. That brings his total to 114 on the season. But Paul Goldschmidt also doing great things with his wife, Amy, in the community. They are very involved with the pediatric cancer unit at Phoenix Children's Hospital. And so our broadcast on Tuesday, September 17th, please join us, be a part of it, help Golding and his wife raise funds, make a $44 donation, and you receive a limited edition Paul Goldschmidt photographic print, plus two lower level tickets to a Diamondbacks game. So a great deal, a great cause, and uh, Golding and his wife really enjoying being part of the community and helping out at PCH. They spend quite a bit of time there when they can with the kids. Guys. They sure do, Jody, and I know you had Amy on Diamondbacks Live before the game today, and that's a great deal here for D-backs fans. You get the print, and you get two lower-level tickets to a Diamondbacks game, all for only $44 if you make a $44 donation to the Diamondbacks' efforts to raise money for Phoenix Children's Hospital. That's a, a cause that is very, very important to Paul and Amy Goldsmith. They work tirelessly with Phoenix Children's Hospital. And so it will be a big night here Tuesday at Chase Field and on Fox Sports Arizona. A $44 donation gets you the print and two seats to a Diamondbacks game, which is a tremendous deal. And that's a limited edition print, by the way. There's, there's not 20,000 of them out there. They're all numbered and authenticated, so... It's a great opportunity to support the Diamondbacks, help out Paul and Amy, and most importantly, help out Phoenix Children's Hospital. That'll be Tuesday on Fox Sports Arizona, and we hope you'll you'll join us. So one more look at the print. This is the limited edition Paul Goldschmidt photographic print. So for $44, obviously Goldie's number. You, Donate $44. It goes to Phoenix Children's Hospital. You get the print, and you get two lower-level tickets to a Diamondbacks game. And that is going to happen here uh, Tuesday during the broadcast. Our thanks to Fox Sports Arizona, the Diamondbacks, Paul and Amy, and, of course, Phoenix Children's Hospital. That'll be a big day, BB. And we know from experience that Paul Goldschmidt is one of the uh, more accessible and uh, cooperative autographs that you can get on this Diamondbacks team. So with that print and a Sharpie, you would have a real collector's item. Tulowitzki pops out to Chris Owings. One away in the sixth. Yeah, so many times, uh, especially on the Sunday day games, after night games, and other selected games during the year, uh, you know, Gibby will say hitting is optional in the cage today. And usually on those days, a lot of guys don't even come out of the locker room. You know, they take care of all their business underneath, in the weight room. In the training room, in the batting cages, but you'll always see Paul Goldschmidt out here on those days taking his ground balls at first base, and when he's done, he usually signs autograph up and down that third base line for anybody that wants it. He is a remarkably accommodating young man, and he gets it, which is just great. Ryan Wheeler, former Diamondback, right, is twice flying out to left. There's Goldie with the glove and a nice throw to Delgado and BB. That's just like the play he made earlier in the series you were talking about. He doesn't throw it to the bag. Get rid of it quickly. Get it to that pitcher as fast as you can so he can get his legs underneath him, find the base over there at first if necessary, stay out of the way of that runner coming down the line. Yeah, so many times it's just a timing play. That first baseman will get to the ball and then just stand there and wait for the pitcher to get to the base. Goldie gives it up early, allows Delgado to make the catch and then find the bag and get out of the way. Yeah, the one the other night was, I believe, Wade Miley. Yeah. He hit him right in stride a, a good 20 feet away from first base, giving Miley plenty of time to get over there and beat the runner. Ball one to Jordan Pacheco. Of course, Wade's beard got there first. <laughs> it always does. Yeah, that was a play, I believe, a play that opened the second inning against, uh, they got Michael Kadire, and Miley had plenty of room to beat Kadire in a foot race to the back. It was a full sprint, which is something you rarely see on those types of plays. Well, if you're a pitcher on this Diamondback staff, and there's a ground ball to that right side of the field, you better get over there and cover the bag, because between Aaron Hill and Paul Goldschmidt, very few are going to get through that right side of the infield. Randall Delgado has done a good job 
After giving up the walk, the homer, and a single, he's retired four in a row. This is the play yesterday we're talking about. Uh, look how far away from first base Goldie was when he got to that ball. But, yeah, a good five, six, seven steps. Wade Miley had to get himself together, get to that bag, and retire the, uh, the batter. Smile, Trevor. <laughs> Delgado behind Pacheco, three and one. He gave up the walk, the homer to Culberson, then the single by Blackman. Since then, he's got three pop ups and a ground up. Three and two to Jordan Pacheco. Torrey Alba's on deck. Park in the park day here at Chase Field. Bring him up and sit him down. Third strikeout for Randall Delgado. He works a one, two, three, six. Diamondbacks lead the Rockies seven, two. Starting tomorrow, big four-game series. We don't want these Dodger people taking over Chase Field. So what we're going to do is we're going to give away a different Sedona Red T-shirt for every game. 5,000 Sedona Red T-shirts with different Weeback slogans. Every ball game, every T-shirt is going to be different Monday through Thursday. So make sure to get your tickets and get your T-shirts for this exciting series. 602-462-4600. Or log on dbacks.com the slash tickets spark in the park sunday here uh, we have in the ballpark with us bb 26,845 people and 252 dogs including ima gold schmitzu he said carefully uh, yes very carefully <laughs> so 252 dogs nice work by the canine crew on bark in the park day Tony Campana leads off the sixth. He will hit for Delgado. Randall Delgado is done after six innings. Gave up two runs on five hits and had three strikeouts. He walked one. Campana hits for the pitcher to lead off the sixth. Though Campana, Eaton Hill, 9-1-2. and two. The numbers on Randall Delgado. Looking for his first win since August 2nd. Well, he deserves one. Pitched really well today. I mean, did give up the home run to Culberson in the fifth inning, but as we've said at the time, wasn't a horrible pitch. He just went down, golfed it out of here. Right back to the mound. It's the first time in a while we've seen a little chopper in the infield by Campana that was not a close play. Say hi. 
Uh, by the way, what happened to your dog sitting days? You were uh, spending most of the summer dog sitting. Yeah, he's, he's still on duty. I think uh, we've got one coming up. I forget exactly <laughs> when. Oh, look at that one. He's done. <laughs> I, yeah, this dog's a regular, isn't yeah, it? We're told he's a bark in the park regular. It looks like the Taco Bell dog. Rutledge in second, and they retire Eaton. Dog breath. Yeah. I don't. Back with Lamar for the first game of four against the Dodgers on Fox Sports Arizona. Diving back live pregame show at 6 o'clock. I love you. But get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Aaron Hill who has uh, walked and struck out twice. 0 for 2. <laughs> I, I noticed... Uh, how about that? What an outfit. Old school D backs colors. And Marmaduke in the house. Nice to have celebrity dogs here. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere there's a fire station missing their Dalmatian. <laughs> well, they've got 100, 100 left, right? Troy Tulowitzki right to him at shortstop. And Lopez works a 1 2 3 6. We'll head to the seventh. The Diamondbacks lead the Rockies 7 2. Chase Field, more than 26,000 people, more than 250 dogs. Watching the Diamondbacks lead the Rockies 7 2. The new pitcher for Arizona to open the seventh inning. Hello there. Is Matt Langwell. Well, so far, in his a brief tenure as a Diamondback after coming over from Cleveland in the Jason Kubel deal, has looked pretty good. Yeah, came in to pitch the ninth inning in game one of this series, a 7 to 5 D backs loss, but had to work his way through Michael Kadire, Willeen Rosario, and Todd Helton, and retired them 1 2 3, including a strikeout of Kadire. And he'll work to your Vitori Alba, Jonathan Herrera, and the pitcher's spot, bottom of the order for the Rockies. In the top of the seventh, Tori Alba 0 for 2.
Still can't get over the end of that ASU game last night. See that? Yeah, that was bizarre. <sighs> I don't think I've ever seen a football game finish like that. People screaming about the refs. I, you know, you get the, you're Wisconsin, you get that first down completion. Spike the ball, kick the field goal. I think we know what they're going to be working on in practice this week. <laughs> Clock management late in the game. ASU Sun Devil Willie Bloomquist. A bunch of die. I saw David Hernandez tweeting pictures from the game last night on the Twitter. And some Instagrams. I think uh, I know Jody was tweeting about the game. I saw Jody tweeting. Yeah, it was certainly an interesting game. Uh, what happened at the end took a little bit of a time to figure out. But you're right, David Hernandez was there. He went with Tony Sipp and Patrick Corbin. They made it there at halftime, to which I said, well, you really saw the most important part of the game. But uh, they enjoyed it. I think David is adopting the Sun Devils as his college team. He almost went to Oklahoma. Uh, so I guess you could say that the Sooners were, you know, maybe his team. But uh, he's picked up a, a Sun Devil hat. And uh, I think he's going to be an ASU fan from now on. That'll work. Yeah, yeah. That's a fun time. Get over there early. Spend some time in downtown Tempe before heading over to the stadium. Hometown of Dennis Lamb. The statue is there right in the center of town. The Dennis Lamb statue. If it isn't, it should be. <laughs> well, Dennis is a statue up here, I can tell you that. He's a fixture. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Herrera walked and scored his last time up. Came in in the Culberson pinch hit home run. And he's got himself a base hit. Herrera aboard for the second time. And D.J. LeMayhew will hit for the pitcher. Now when I went over to the Rockies clubhouse this morning. Pay my respects to Todd Helton. I had a chance to sit down and talk with DJ LeMayhew. Uh, he played with my son a couple of different spots in the Cubs minor league system. And I asked him point blank because DJ LeMayhew was a very good third baseman, a very good shortstop. He finds himself at second base with the Rockies. You know, if you had your choice, where would you rather play? And like you would expect a young kid in the major leagues. I don't care. Wherever they want me, that's fine. But, uh, he said, I just would like to have one position and settle into it. Uh, if they want me to be a super utility guy, I can handle that. But he said, uh, I feel if I play a lot of third base, I'm a good third baseman. If I play a lot of short, I can handle that position. But, but for right now, it seems like second base is uh, going to be his own. Well, it's a tough break for him there in a pinch hit roll because that fly out ends what had been his career best 14 game hitting streak. So that's a tough way to lose a hit streak. But. Yeah, they've had a revolving door at second base, and he's settled in nicely, kind of wrestled the job away from Rutledge, as we mentioned earlier in the ball game. And he profiles well at that spot because he's not a power hitter. Third base, you want a little more power. They have Arenado, but uh, it seems like leaving him at second base would be the right call. Kurt Gibson goes to get Langwell. Pitching change. Joe Thatcher coming in. We'll take a break.
part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Lone Butte Casino, you're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. Chase Field, new pitcher for the Diamondbacks. The left-hander Joe Thatcher is on. 69th appearance of the year. He has worked a lot, both for the Padres and the Diamondbacks. And he'll work to the leadoff man, Charlie Blackman, with Jonathan Herrera at first and two outs in the seventh. Blackman is two for three. He has singled and doubled. This is a guy a lot like D.J. LeMahieu that Bob was talking about earlier. Blackman can fill some different spots in the lineup as Will Harris appears ready. Gotta figure out where to play these guys. Blackman and Dickerson and Pacheco and LeMahieu and Rutledge. Chop right to Goldie. We'll head to the home half of the seventh, and leading it off will be Paul Goldschmidt, who is a triple shy of the cycle at 7-2 D-backs. Things that you want to go on forever and ever. You know, I had his first game, put him in the lineup, say go get him, and uh, you're looking at the end. Um, he has brought a lot of class to the game. Uh, batting titles, uh, Gold Glove, All Star games. And he's the face of the franchise. You know, if you want to retire a, a number, 17 is going to be the, the one you retire first. Our Geico quote of the game from Todd Helton's first manager, the original manager of the Colorado Rockies, Don Baylor. And you could see the emotion in his voice, heartfelt thoughts on Todd Helton retiring from the game. It just won't be the same looking over to the Rockies dugout and not seeing Todd Helton over there, guys. It's going to be different, that's for sure, especially for Rockies fans who have uh, really, in many ways, not known anything else than Todd Helton at first base for the longest time, certainly 17 years. You can see, BB, uh, what it meant to Groove there. He was pretty emotional in that sound. Well, I can certainly understand that. I mean, certain players, uh, they, they're more than just players on your team. There feels like family. And uh, without a doubt, Don Baylor, uh, I'm sure, looked to Todd Helton. Be uh, that team leader that he very quickly grew into and show the young guys how to go about their business, not only what he does on the field, but how he conducted himself off the field, how he handled himself with the media, how he treated the people in the organization that maybe weren't in the clubhouse. Uh, just one of the all-time good guys in the game.
New pitcher for the Rockies is Jeff Manship, and he will face Paul Goldschmidt as Goldie steps in in the seventh. A triple shy of the cycle. He hit a triple yesterday. Goldie RBI single in the first, a two-run home run in the third, and a two-run double his last time up in the fourth. He has driven in five. He's our APS Energy All-Star. He's been on base eight times in this series. Yesterday, a walk and a triple. He scored a run. That one is chopped to third. And that's a foul ball. This is Goldie yesterday, and uh, we know he's certainly capable of a triple. He's got three this year, including last night. And got a little assistance from the outfield fence. That ball hit right at the base of the right field wall and skipped away from Kadai, or allowing Goldie to circle the bases. But once again, I point this out all the time uh, like it's the exception. It shouldn't be the exception. It should be the rule. Goldie doesn't assume anything. A lot of guys would have posed at home plate. Uh, there's an opposite field home run. Look at that. Even if it doesn't leave, I'll get a sure double. Not Goldie. He busted it out of the batter's box and ended up with his third triple of the season. Looking for number four right here. And the cycle. He's got a shot. It's down the line in right. But Blackman is over there to cut it off. It'll stop at first. Paul Goldschmidt is four for four. <laughs> oh, my. I thought that ball was going to slice down into the right field corner, but it. Uh, just, I was right there with you. Yeah, it just kind of puffed up on the grass and slowed down enough. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, just a lousy single. <laughs> And that somehow gets behind Blackman and rattles against that bullpen fence like it did yesterday and got away from Kadire. He might have had a shot at it, but Blackman was over there in time, and it's a leadoff single for Goldie. And it brings up Martin Prado, who's two for three. He doubled in the first and singled in the third. That should get Goldie over 300. 296 coming into the ball game, four for four. I'll wait for someone who's better at math to calculate that. 0-1 to Prado. I've got Goldie unofficially at 301. Yeah, there it is. Nice. So he's at 301 on the year. He's got five RBIs today. That gets him up to 114 to lead the National League. And with the home run, he's now only one behind. The Pirates' Pedro Alvarez for the league lead in homers. That would be the Goldie Triple Crown for this season. Try and keep an eye on that over the course of the final few weeks here. Second four-hit game in a week for Goldie. Had four hits against the Dodgers last Wednesday. Prado strikes out. Here's Miguel Montero. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Diamondbacks live with Cindy Brunson and Jody Jackson immediately following the ball game here on Fox Sports Arizona. How are you coming on Mickey's walk-up music? Uh, maybe next year you and Whiskey's Quicker can play that. Why? We'd have to start practicing right now. You can do the vocals. <laughs> I'm not sure there are lyrics per se, apparently just noises. It, it sounds like the singer was rolling downstairs as he was singing that. <laughs> Miggy! Wow, what a play by Rutledge at second, and they turn the double play. Josh Rutledge! Wow! Some Colorado defense. They go 4 6 3. We head to the eighth. It's a 7 2 Diamondbacks lead.
exclusive benefits, a flexible 12-month payment option, and a plan that's right for you. If you can't make all 81 home games, don't worry. We got you covered. We figured it all out. Check out a half season or a weekend plan. Just come to the games on the weekends. Or if you don't want to miss a single moment of baseball next year, go all in with full season tickets. So buy or renew for 2014. Call 602-462-4600 or log on to dbacks.com slash tickets. All kinds of benefits, early entry to Chase Field, giveaways, special autograph sessions, all kinds of reasons to become a D-back season ticket holder in 2014. Right, get your friends, your family involved, get your neighborhood involved, split some tickets. Great way to come out here to the ballpark and uh, enjoy your time watching some big league hardball. There's former Rocky Will Harris, who had a rough outing against his old team on Friday, gave up four runs on four hits in one-third of an inning. And he's on to start the eighth against Rutledge, Dickerson, and Tulo, two, three, and four. What a play by Rutledge to end that last inning. Wow. Right to second base, Aaron Hill won away. Updating the old at and uh, Twitter poll. Favorite extra inning game this season. I, I know this was yours, BB, because it was seven hours and six minutes. Well, and it got really bizarre at the end when we saw a couple of position players pitch for the Phillies, and uh, that, that's when the game got blown open completely. But, yeah, that, that was a fun game. Casper Wells had pretty good stuff. Eating uh, for an outfielder. Cheesesteak all night long, you know, seven hours of concentrated cheesesteak consuming. <sighs> I barely made it out of that ballpark. <laughs> Food at that place is nuts. Corey Dickerson, 0 for 3. Tony Lukes. And I literally stopped and did a double take walking by the sign that said chicken and donuts. <laughs> Not often you see that. Boy, those donuts were fresh, too. I mean, they were. Hot. Oh, <laughs> telling you what, that's a very, you know, it's an underrated ballpark. We hear a lot about, you know, AT&T Park and place in Pittsburgh, PNC Park that are so nice. You got the bay, the river, the bridge, the whole thing. But to Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, kind of underrated for me. Really nice ballpark. Not to mention that is the parking lot capital of the world with all three of their sports facilities right there in the same area. Yeah, you could park every car in Phoenix next to those stadiums. Eagles were there playing today against the Chargers. Hanging on. Speaking of PNC Park, I see the Pirates won today, beat the Cubs 3-2. Cardinals are, well, they just pounded Seattle 12-2. And the Reds were losers at Milwaukee 6-5. So that National League Central race, that's going to go down to the last day, it seems. Apparently a two-man show down at Dodger Stadium today between the Giants and the Dodgers. Hunter Pence has all three RBIs for the Giants. Adrian Gonzalez has all three for the Dodgers. So Pence has ten RBIs in his last two games, and he's not done yet. Three and two to Dickerson foul all the way. So the updated National League Central standings are right on cue. Excellent work by Bill Cochran, our producer. 87 and 62. Pirates and Cardinals, three and a half. Ahead of Cincinnati. The Buckos trying to hang on and win that thing. I hope they do. That would be cool. Avoid that wild card game. 
So you'd be looking right now at a Reds Cardinals wild card game. One game playoff. There's the strike. And the strikeout, two down in the air. Brings up Troy Tulowitzki. He's one for three with a single in the fourth. Shortstop, Troy Tulowitzki. Actually, the Rockies will go home after this. Finally, it's been a long road trip for them. They will host St. Louis uh, starting tomorrow. The Pirates are home against the Padres starting tomorrow. And the Reds go to Houston. Remember when Will Harris pitched against these guys on Friday, everything was up. He didn't look comfortable out there, kind of fidgety. Much, much better today. Sure enough, he throws one in the dirt. Yeah, better in the dirt than hanging up there, letter high over the middle of the plate. You were right the other night. Uh, he just couldn't get his pitches down into the zone. Wanted to make sure he didn't leave that curveball up. Bounced about 10 feet out in front of home plate. That's a strike, says Tony Randazzo behind the plate. One and two. Always better down than up with a breaking ball. Occasionally you'll get an aggressive hitter to chase that pitch. That one bounced right off of home plate, but Tulowitzki just couldn't hold up. One and two. Have to chase it once, maybe he'll chase it again. You saw that uh, kind of a bare spot on the barrel of Troy Tulowitzki's bat right there. It's got that dark finish on the wood and. I don't know whether that's from solid contact in the same place every at bat or whether he has intentionally rubbed some of the varnish off the barrel of that bat. He's just wore out the sweet spot. <laughs> Three and two. There and left for Dan Rosewich, our Golden Glover. Range isn't quite what it used to be. Dan's working left field today. Terry McGowan down the right field line. Another 3 2 pitch to Troy Tulowitzki. Base hit. Tulo two for four, a pair of singles, brings up Ryan Wheeler. Wheeler is 0 for 3. There's Ryan Wheeler. Went to Colorado from the D-backs in the offseason in the Matt Reynolds deal. The news on uh, Matt this week was not good. Had a little bit of a setback trying to come back and throw and continue working through part of his program. Had some discomfort in the elbow, so they had to shut him down again, and they're going to take a look and evaluate further. So that was discouraging. 
Goalie in fair territory, right to him, right on the bag, and that's the inning. Bottom of the eighth coming up, this one all Diamondbacks, they lead it 7-2. Seven two. We are set for the eighth inning. And hey, fans, find out who will be the next Fox Sports Arizona girl. Join us Tuesday, six o'clock. Diamondbacks live pregame show is the Fox Sports Arizona girls. Mallory and Danielle will introduce the winner and their newest member, and together they will fight crime. New Fox Sports Arizona girl. Is it an unveiling? That doesn't seem right. A debut introduction. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's big. Tuesday, 6 o'clock, Diamondbacks Live pregame show. So check that out. Maybe take a lap around the field in the back of a convertible doing that uh, <laughs> Queen of England wave. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they should have arranged that if they haven't. Maybe there's still time. Here's Matt Davidson, who hit his first Major League home run his last time up. He's one for three. Ticker tape parade. And hard to left. That gets down for a base hit. Davidson takes the turn. He's got a home run and he's got a double. He's two for four. That's his third big league double. He's put a couple of good swings on some balls today, DB. Yeah, and he's shown the ability to stay back on off-speed breaking pitches. The home run was on a four-seam fastball in the low 90s. This time a rolling breaking ball in the middle of the plate. You know, for a guy that generates a lot of power, he keeps his hands back. Occasionally his weight will get out on the front foot, but because he keeps his hands back, he still has a lot left when he makes contact like that double down the left field line. Here's Gerardo Parra, who tripled and scored in the fourth. Up the first baseline, Pacheco pounces on it. Manship covers, and Davidson's in at third. Look for the D-backs. That's the fifth time they've had the leadoff man of an inning on base in this ball game today. The Rockies have yet to get a leadoff man in an inning on base. Makes such a huge difference on what you can do offensively as a manager, what you can do offensively as a team. When you get that leadoff man on there, it just creates all kinds of opportunities. Puts pressure on the pitcher and catcher. Puts pressure on the defense. And as we talked about in a, just a, one of those wacky baseball oddities, the Rockies had their leadoff man in each of the first five innings fly out to left field. Base hit for Chris Owings. And 
Chris has got his first Major League RBI. Good night for Diamondbacks prospects. A good quick swing on the pitch. It appeared to be off the plate inside, but with that infield drawn in, he just muscles it out into shallow center. Congratulations to Chris Owens on his first RBI. And Willie Bloomquist will hit for the pitcher. So Matt Davidson's first big league homer. Chris Owens' first big league RBI. It's an 8-2 Diamondbacks lead. And here's Willie who will hit for the pitcher. Jazz Rowe cranking it up in the D-backs bullpen. Appears he'll come in and pitch the top half of the ninth. Owings on base twice today. A single a walk. He scored a run. Willie went down and got it. Knocked it right to Rutledge at second. Owings is back in time. And that's the second out. Brings up Adam Eaton. Rutledge had a really good day defensively. Spanky Eaton singled, stole a base, and scored in the first. Reached on an error and scored in the fourth. Adam has four hits in the series. There's the strike 0 and 1. Right field, Blackman bounces in front, Owen stops at second. Two hit day for Adam Eaton. This thing going here with two outs and give Goldie another big RBI opportunity. He's got five runs batted in today. Aaron Hill walked and scored in the third. He's 0 for 3. Well, you go back to the last game of the road trip against LA. Diamondbacks had 15 hits in that ball game, a 4 1 win. Came back with 12 hits in the first game of this series against the Rockies, although they dropped the game 7-5. to five. Last night, 16 more hits and 12 on the board again today. Good to see the offense starting to string some things together. That's for sure. A lot of extra base hits. A couple of home runs, a triple, a couple of doubles. That one has popped up first base side. Pacheco in foul ground near the Rockies dugout. He's got it. And they strand two. That sends us to the ninth. It's an 8-2 Diamondbacks lead.
for the trade. Diamondbacks in this series have had a little bit of everything. They've had good pitching. Brandon McCarthy, Wade Miley, Randall Delgado today. And over the course of the season, you've seen Tyler Skaggs pitch well here. Patrick Corbin. They've done really well here at Chase Field against Colorado. Which is not an easy test. This Rockies team, as we talked about coming into this series, uh, they pound at baseball. They were tied with the Cardinals coming into this series in batting average. Look at those numbers. Wow. And with uh, the win today here, after three more outs, the Diamondbacks will have won seven of their last eight against the Rockies here at Chase Field, and they will clinch their third straight season series win over Colorado with three more still to play at Coors Field next weekend. Chaz Rowe will work the ninth for the D-backs, his 14th appearance this year. He'll work to Jordan Pacheco, Yorvi Torrealba, and Jonathan Herrera. Six, seven, and eight, the scheduled hitters for the Rockies. Two and one. Chaz Rowe with that uh, Civil War facial hair. Right out, out of a Gettysburg reenactment. Chaz Rowe's been kind of an interesting guy since coming up here to the major league level for the D-backs. He's got two really good pitches, a heavy sinking fastball in the low 90s, hard late breaking slider. He just hasn't been able to consistently find the strike zone. When he is in the zone, he rarely gets hit hard. When he gets into trouble, usually he puts guys on base via the walk. Pop up. Right behind the mound. Aaron Hill had to jump up there and save the day. One out. Hey, fans, the video game that puts you in the owner's suite is now available free on iPhone and iPad. You can build your own stadium and make the decisions to guide your team to the World Series. Just download MLB Ballpark Empire. It's free today. Gorby Toriel, but the catcher is 0 for 3. Chaz Rowe, a former first-round pick by the Rockies in the 05 draft. He was the 32nd overall selection that year. Well, that'll be all right by Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas. What was that up over the course of the year? I bet. Oh, man, and you get them late in the season like that, and... You know, the year comes to an end. You go back home and you don't have a training room at your house. You know, <laughs> those bruises tend to last deep into the off season when you get them uh, the last week of the season. No one two. Good slider there from Rowe. Diamondbacks live follows the ball game here on Fox Sports Arizona. Jody Jackson, Cindy Brunson have that for you. And we are back tomorrow for the first of four against the Dodgers. Hope to see you out here at Chase Field.
Don't forget, 5,000 Sedona Red T-shirts per game, a different T-shirt every day. Matt Davidson. And Jonathan Herrera is the last man standing for the Rockies. He's been on base twice, walked and scored in the fifth, and singled his last time up. He's two for three. And it's funny, Herrera today, it's what a weird game this can be. This is his first start of the year at third base. And I'm looking down here. I don't think he's had a ball hit to him all day. In fact, he had one pop-up that was hit to him in foul ground in the fifth inning. And that's been it. <laughs> in the meantime, he got Prado. Every other ball has been hit to him out there. <laughs> Herrera at third. Can't even get a sniff. He has seen almost all of his action this year at shortstop and second base. Up the middle base hit. He's aboard for the third time today. And this will give Willene Rosario a chance to get an at bat. He will hit for the pitcher. Pitch for Jeff Manship, number 20, Willene Rosario. Only eight pinch hit at bats all season for Willene Rosario, normally the starting catcher. He's three for eight off the bench for Walt Weiss this season. I would imagine in this situation he's going to be looking to satellite something. I don't think he's going to try to punch it through the right side. This is all those numbers. No catcher in the National League has more home runs or RBIs than Willene Rosario, who has had two hits in each of the first two games in this series. A couple of singles and a run scored last night. He drove in four in Friday's series opener. And he is really finishing well down the stretch. He's hit almost 330 since August 1st. Rosario last 30 games, 26 RBIs. Oh, the real change for Rosario, we talked about it in the first two games of this series, the improvement behind the plate. Man, he has come light years from where he was at the beginning of this season or the end of last year. 21 pass balls last season. And a number of wild pitches credited to his pitching staff that he probably should have blocked. And, boy, you've... That's got to mean a lot to this organization, Bob, especially as we talked about earlier when they're trying to find spots for Pacheco and those types of guys. You don't want to have to move Rosario to a corner spot if you can keep him behind the plate and put another guy in there at first or third or left or wherever you would think about moving Rosario. That would really help the depth. Not to mention the improved defense and what that will mean to the pitching staff that's uh, operating on very thin ice on a nightly basis. There's the strikeout, and that's the ball game and the series for the Diamondbacks. They win it here on Bark in the Park Day, 8-2, to two, and they take two of three from the Rockies. And now we'll look ahead to the series with the Dodgers starting tomorrow, first of four. And what a day for Paul Goldschmidt. A single, a home run, a double. He had five RBIs. It's a first for the rookies in the lineup today. Matt Davidson with his first career major league home run and Chris Owings with his first career RBI. Good day all the way around. And let's finish it off on a high note. We start Diamondbacks live with Cindy Brunson. Thanks so much, fellas. 8-2 is the final count as the Diamondbacks get the victory over the Colorado Rockies in the rubber match. Win number 42 on the season here at Chase Field. And we're just getting the party started here with Diamondbacks Live presented by Nissan. Ahead, you will hear from Matt Davidson what he has to say after hitting his first career major league home run. And we'll talk about how good Mr. Randall Delgado feels about win number five on the season. All of that and more ahead on Diamondbacks Live. Do stick and stay.